finances are a bit of a taboo subject really so it's surprising that so many of you contacted me recently with requests to cover how I actually pay for my Tesla and took other different options of financing it before all that though please remember that I'm in no way giving you any advice on what you should do I'm not a financial advisor so you should do what you think's right and what you can afford and watch until the end for a preview of what's to come on the channel I mention it in the comments so I know who's actually got to the end of the video it's John back with another video and today I'm doing a video that some of you have requested and when it comes to finances everybody is different so I'm not too sure who this will help but if it helps one person make a decision then I suppose it's job done so if you're watching this in the US or Canada the main proportion of my audience then some of this may not apply but I'm sure the ethos will be the same and if you're watching this in the UK then I guess it's more geared towards you guys so in the UK there are a number of ways to finance a car Going back years and years, people would say, if you can't afford to buy something outright, then you can't afford it at all. But times have changed. There are that many incentives to take, whether it be 0% rates on finance, cashback options, electric car subsidies or daily discounts. You would think then, in many respects, it's probably a bit silly to purchase a depreciating asset with cash. Is cash the king anymore? So what main ways are there to purchase or finance a car in the UK? Well, firstly, there is the good old-fashioned cash option. If you're cash rich and you don't need discounts or incentives, then I suppose this will be the easier way to buy a car, no matter how long you're going to keep it for. You simply walk into a dealer or order a Tesla online, as this case may be, give your card details, and with a few clicks of a button, you probably own a car outright. And if that works for you, then that's great. Your circumstances dictate to you that that's the way to go. The other way to purchase, and I'll use that term loosely from now on, is to go on to a, what's called a higher purchase agreement. A higher purchase is a way of obtaining a car then paying off the capital of the asset over a set period of time. And in the UK it's usually either 36, 48 or 60 months. Essentially, it's just a straight up loan arranged through the company you're buying the car from, usually. And be careful when you're doing this because it, it can get quite complicated when you look at at new cars versus used cars. A new car will often come with dealer discount or an offer whereas a used car generally they don't. In addition to that the rate on the loan on a used car is usually significantly more than that on a new car. I don't know why that is. and It's more of a personal loan arranged through a third party. Personally, I've never taken a purchase agreement out on a used car. The rate of the finance is too high for it to be worth it. I just don't feel like I'm, I'm getting what I want out of it and I don't like the feeling of being fleeced. One advantage of taking out a higher purchase though is that once you've made the last payment, the car's yours, you own it. How much you've actually paid for the car over the five years is anybody's guess though. So PCP next, and PCP stands for Personal Contract Purchase. And this is similar to a higher purchase in that you receive the car having paid very little up front, sometimes no nothing, and you make monthly payments. However, PCP is slightly different in that you have a large payment at the end of the agreement to pay, and that's called a balloon payment. PCP arrangements usually mean that your monthly payments are less than that on a higher purchase because you're not really financing all of the purchase price of the car. So for example, if you opt for the standard range plus Tesla on a PCP, the car roughly costs £40,000. The final payment, or the balloon payment at the end, is roughly £18,000. So you're only paying the difference between the forty and the 18000 on a monthly basis. And this is that is the portion that you're financing. So it means the payments are less than they would be on a higher purchase. So that's the way to go then, is it? Well, it depends. You don't simply get away with the 18000 at the end. 
So unlike high purchase, you don't own the car until you've made your last payment. You either give the car back, refinance the 18,000 and continue to pay on a monthly basis, or upgrade the car hoping that there's some equity in it. And this is where it gets slightly complicated, and this is where I've probably made a huge mistake now. Because I decided to lease my Tesla, which is fine for me. It works, but I wish I'd have done it on a PCP on account of how used car prices are right now and the direction that electric cars are going in general. So if you have, head over to Auto Trader on, or eBay, it's now routine to find Teslas with miles on the clock that cost the same as or even more money than a brand new one. And that's down to a few factors, and granted this may change in the future. So there's a chip shortage at the moment. There's a fuel crisis, albeit that's now starting to alleviate. And there are waiting lists. And these things combined mean that there's been an uplift in the prices of used cars, which in turn has caused a shortage, which, vicious circle, has caused a price increase and so on and so on. And some dealers are even struggling for used car stock now. Now I've bought cars for years, and I've always just accepted that they lose money, but with electric cars in particular, this isn't the case at the moment. And for that reason, I should have PCP'd the Tesla, because then I would have had an appreciating asset that I could have sold and make money if I wanted to. Seems a bit silly when we're talking about cars, that. So that brings me on to leasing the Tesla. So leasing means you never own the car. You can make as many payments as you want on it, you can beg Tesla to let you buy it, but you'll never own it. You simply pay a deposit, then pay a monthly figure, and then when the agreement is at an end, you just give the car back, and perhaps you do it all over again. This benefits people who run a car through a business. There's something called benefit in kind in the UK. Benefit in kind is a tax on employees who receive benefits or perks on top of the salary. If you've got a company car for private use, you'll have to pay the BIK BIK rather contribution or company car tax and every car has a BIK percentage banding and this is based on CO2 emissions, a P11D value which is the list price including extras and VAT but without the first year registration fee and vehicle tax. Now all Tesla cars are eligible for 1% BIK rate. Petrol and diesel cars are taxed at higher BIK rates and that's up to 37%. So doing it through a business makes financial sense and many businesses run cars that way. So three main options. There are many caveats to each option, of course, and again, I'm not a financial advisor and the decision you make should be based on what you feel comfortable with. So this was the first video that I've done on the back of requests. So I hope it was of some interest to you, it's quite short. So what do you think you will do? Are you in the market for a Tesla? How do you think you're gonna pay for it? Have you had a conundrum like I had? Do you see the value in one over the other? Let me know in the comments section. Oh, and I've got something very different coming up soon, so keep watching the channel. Until next time.